What's going on, Internet? I'm Christopher Peterson from Nerdy XP. And I'm Alira, his sidekick. And today we're here to help you with your anime IQ. We've picked our five favorite animes of the moment to share with you and to add to your watch list if you are new to anime and to scold you about if you're an anime connoisseur and you haven't yet seen them. Number five is Sword Art Online. This anime centers around a group of characters who plug into a virtual reality world wanting to experience an MMORPG and discover a sinister twist. Just when they think they're ready to kick off for the first day of the game, the game developer comes in and tells everyone that he has turned off the safety and that everything that happens in the game is going to happen to the gamers in real life. I mean, this creates a lot of tension. Uh, and it creates a world where characters have limited resources, EXP, and maybe have to band together or go rogue to try and reach the 100th floor. There's a clear quest goal in mind here, and kind of borrows heavily upon a lot of gaming tropes and terminology that you would expect. Unfortunately for our players, if they happen to die while attempting to level up or to escape the game, they do in fact die in real life. Uh, throughout the story, there's a lot of singular episodes that tell a, you know, a good story, a compelling story, or sometimes, you know, a depressing story that hits you right here in the feels, um, but, you know, it all kind of culminates together to give a full overarching uh, saga. One of the fantastic things that this anime does is it allows our hero, Kirito, to actually become the hero for the most part as he's leading his way up and trying to escape the game on behalf of himself and his fellow gamers, but it's also not afraid to let him fail. And unfortunately, sometimes the people that are counting on him the most are disappointed. Uh, one thing that I really enjoy about like Kirito is his relationship with Asuna. Uh, I feel like a lot of animes like hint at the fact that the characters have like crushes on each other or romantically involved. This one does, you know, full dive spin with both feet and you know kind of pays off in a lot of ways throughout the story. It's definitely nice to see them not afraid to let the characters have affection for one another. But what was also really interesting is uh, some of the ways that it aligned itself with its gamer audience. So it was really interesting to see, you know, people's false identities get stripped away for people to actually become more like their avatars and actually get to relive and re-envision themselves in this world. And overall, get to see them experience some crazy things that they would never get to see in real life. Uh, if you enjoy action animes that, you know, with a hint of drama attached to them, we re definitely recommend Sword Art Online. Number four is Gunsword, a space opera, cowboy, odyssey, crazy combination of all things awesome. Uh, Vaughn of the Dawn, he'll acquire a couple names throughout the series, ends up uh, on a quest for vengeance. You know, he, he has no intentions of being a hero, but on his way to, you know, get revenge and murder this other person, uh, he kind of does heroic deeds and kind of picks up a following, despite himself. Vaughn is a really tragic hero. He has a very heart-wrenching backstory that they definitely allow to unfold over time. You get kind of a more complete picture about his personal history as the story progresses. And it's really interesting to see him grow out of his shell and to align with some of the, the random characters that he draws to his cause along the way. Also, Mecha, Giant Robots, pretty cool. Have to say, I really enjoy that aspect of this. And some kind of Voltron, Power Ranger-esque overtones as well. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, you know, the, the, the Voltron characters are, me personally, a little too on the comedic relief side and kind of push a little bit too far on that. But overall, the main stories and the main characters do a good job balancing that. There's action sequences, those epic battles, and, you know, brief comedy throughout. It's also some really great artwork. They do a great job of the action scenes, but also the characters and the sketches and how they show how they evolve over time. I really enjoyed that aspect of it. And also it had a great opening sequence. Yeah, one of the things I really liked about the opening is in the first episode, everybody's silhouettes. You can't really see or tell, make heads of what's going on. But as characters are introduced in the first, second, even 12th episode, those silhouettes be filled, become filled in with the characters who you are then interacting with. It's really interesting because I think it's one of the only shows that I consistently actually am okay with watching the opening sequence for. It's not something that I want to fast forward through or that I feel like I need to skip ahead for. It's really cool to see that story evolve in the opening credits over time. 
Uh, Gun Sword is one season, but it tells a great story throughout. Uh, you know, definitely has a clearly defined goal, and you know, along that path is a you know great intro, middle, and conclusion. Dark overtones, comedy, action, adventure, definitely a must see. Number three is Fruits Basket. Uh, Fruits Basket is a little bit more lighthearted than a lot of the other entries that are on this list, and it's definitely the most uh, full, outright like comedic, but has a lot of heart-touching moments and kind of like great character buildup. All the feels, all the feels. So Chris really humored me uh, in letting me put this on the list because it was a little bit different than the other ones that we were featuring. But Fruits Basket is absolutely a great story. Um, it does have some melancholy, um, darker moments, and there's definitely a family curse at play that has some interesting consequences. Um, the Soma family actually can't hug a member of the opposite sex without turning into a member of the Chinese horoscope. So the Soma family has 12 Chinese horoscopes that you recognize, and then the secret 13th one, uh, the cat. And this plays a lot into the story as we see the dynamic between the, the cat and the rat, and how Toru kind of, uh, Honda brings these two characters together. It's a classic girl meets boy, meets boy's family member, likes both of them, there's some rivalry, um, but also a great story, and kind of a look at the Chinese culture and how they view their folk legends and their astrological signs and just some really fun high school moments too. Yeah, Fruits Basket does a great job of having singular episodes that can be watched, you know, and enjoyed and, you know, kind of building up to a greater whole in the story near the conclusion. And I'm embarrassed to say that I've probably watched the entire series more than a dozen times. Number two is Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Uh, this story centers around two brothers who live in a world where alchemy is a form of magic where if you draw a symbol on the ground or on a glove or basically anything, you imbue it with magical properties. It's really interesting to show their kind of philosophy as a society about equivalent exchange. So you can't get something from someone for free. There's always a cost associated with it, some way to balance the act to make it equal and fair for everyone. So I think there's a great message under all um, about kind of how you should be engaging with people. But it's really tragic too because the Elric brothers have a really horrible sacrifice based on um, something that they try to do. Edward and Alphonse Eric have committed the ultimate taboo in alchemy when they try and bring their mother back to life. Uh, this ends up costing them their, their bodies, and the entire story is kind of a search for how they can become whole again. Um, and this is both like physically whole and also emotionally whole. And it's really interesting too because these children have to join the military to have access to the resources that they really need to progress their alchemy and to have a hope of returning to their former selves. Um, and while they're involved in the military, they uncover a bigger conspiracy that impacts the entire nation. Uh, I mean, the story does a great job starting off small and then growing and becoming bigger. And throughout it, the cast also expands. And, you know, they each bring in their own sense of, like, humor and responsibility and, you know, kind of action sequences. I, mean, I think this anime does a really great job of kind of balancing all those factors. In, in, in any given episode, you'll cry, you'll laugh, you'll gape in astonishment. You'll also cheer as the Elric brothers take down baddie after baddie. Um, one of the things that I really enjoy about this too is that um, there are a couple of different versions and iterations of the story via the manga and then also Full Metal Alchemist, the first series that they did. And Brotherhood is the one that brings it home. It is the closest aligned with the, ma the manga and it has the best overarching story. Uh, number one, the undisputed anime king champion in the Peterson household is Full Metal Panic. So, with Full Metal Panic, you are following the life of Sosuke Sagara, a would-be hero, awkward high school student, slash bodyguard that is looking out for the likes of one Miss Konami Chittery. Uh, Sosuke is really great in the military field, but once he goes into high school, kind of all of those skills and abilities he has uh, go to the wayside and, you know, he does over-the-top things like blowing up a shoe locker because somebody put a note in it. 
It's really interesting to see a hero's best assets become one of their foibles as they're put in a situation where they just can't deal. So a lot of comedy, a lot of action adventure, some really interesting military... Hi, sushi. Pardon the interruption. This intermission has been brought to you by our fattest cat. <laughs> He's also a fan. So it's really interesting to see, you know, this juxtaposition of military with school life, um, this kind of secret society and this secret armed force that's looking to really police the world and make it a safer place for everyone. Uh, Full Model Panic does the best job of having comedic relief tied into action sequences. Um, you know, one episode you watch will be feels like it's out of, straight out of a comedy, and the next will be a you know epic anime mech battle. There are really great stories that are tackled in each of the three seasons. The first season really sets you up and introduces you to the characters, helps you understand how the military aspect fits in with the high school kind of comedy. Um, the second season, Fumufu, is actually mostly comedic, but also does a really great job of tying in everyone's backstory and kind of showing the challenges involved in trying to assimilate into everyday Japanese life. And the third season, uh, Full Metal Panic, the second raid, uh, tells a 13-episode arc. It definitely has some of the series lows as far as the characters are concerned. But, you know, I mean, with any valley comes a, a huge peak and it has some of the best character moments and, you know, kind of motivations that you see come to light for these guys. Quite honestly, the only thing negative that I could say about this series is the fact that they didn't continue the story on. You absolutely do end up with a neat ending at the end of the second raid, but I feel like there's so much more story to tell. I want to know what happens to Sosuke and Konami after the second raid. Well, those are our top five anime. What are yours? We'd love to hear from you guys below in the comments. If you like this video, please prove it by liking this video. Comments are also acceptable. If you like us and would like to hear more of our rants, ideas, opinions, shows, or just to ask us questions or hang out, you can follow us on Twitter. You can follow Chris at ChrisTasticGuy, or you can follow me at Alira. Well, I hope this video helps you guys with your anime IQ. Level up, friends.